Hi guys, Garth here, and do you suffer from sciatica? Because if you do, stick around. If you, for example, have just come back from an injury, say you've hurt your lower back or something like that, and you've rested it and it's rehabbed and everything, but you end up suffering with sciatica, it can be, you know, from just a little niggle, a little bit of, you know, a little bit of throbbing pain or you literally won't be able to you know walk without agonizing pain it's going to really put a dent in you know your happiness it's going to make you really miserable because you can't do what you want to do you can't be as active as you used to be so i'm going to show you a couple of little exercises to help beat sciatica for good sciatica can be caused by disc problems uh, nerve impingement uh, many many things so obviously you want to get checked out first to make sure you don't have anything like that but a lot of the time it's also caused by just being out of whack in your hips. So you might have one side that's a lot stronger than the other and that's sometimes that's why it's generally you know, one-sided um, for a lot of people. So the first thing we're gonna do to tackle this is the 90-90. So there's two main things to think about when we're doing the 90-90. And ideally we'd like to be sitting upright uh, with one hip in external rotation and one hip in internal rotation. Now it might not be feasible for you to sit like this initially because you're just that tight and you're that sore. So in the 1990, if you can't sit like this comfortably, so hips are square on, one hip's internally rotated, one hip's internally rotated, one hip's externally rotated. If you need to, you can put your hand on the floor, you know, to support yourself up a little bit. Otherwise, sometimes you might fall over if it's just so tight. So from there, if it is still, if it's still sort of undoable, all you can do is sort of close the 90-90 down a little bit. So it's kind of, I don't know, what do you call it, a 45-45, whatever. But you bring the foot into the upper thigh, and then you just bring this knee in a bit as well. So that might make it a little bit more gentle for you. Again, if you're still struggling, you can lean back on the elbow, so you can have your elbow on the ground so you're like that or you can lean against the wall or something or a chair or something to help you sit in that position. But the main thing is that you start getting the hips to move with the rotation because rotation, especially internal rotation, is a hugely underworked part of your hips movement and it causes a lot of problems for a lot of people. So what we're going to do initially is you're sitting here, say you're supporting yourself or you're free. What we're going to do is we're going to put both hands out in front of you, just a little bit out in front of you, just to support you a little bit. And with a nice flat back, so you're nice and straight here, you're going to lean forward just as far as you can and back. So ideally, you want to get chest to your knee, but initially what you can do is just, this is plenty. It's just to get that little bit of hip flexion on the internally rotated hip, and that little tiny bit of extension on the internally rotated hip. So just start building that up and then you just move to circles. So just do, you know, five to 10 of each, kind of, and then five to 10 circles as well. So that's just, to, all that's for is just to get you moving in this position because you need to have a little bit of play with positions. Um, it's the same with stretching. You want to be moving about in it. You want to make that position your own. You don't want to be holding it under stress you want to be able to adapt and move and wiggle and stuff. So do that, two to three rounds, you know, five to 10 forward leans, five to 10 circles in one direction, five to 10 in the other direction. That should only take you about 30 seconds, but then whatever way you can, I want you to swap sides. So even if it's hands on the floor and walk yourself around, swap the sides. Then just check to make sure one side's not tighter than the other, because if you are sort of dominant on one side, one side, say, the internal rotation on this side could be tighter than my other side, and that's something to be aware of and look at. So again, we're gonna just, you know, say, let's do five here, but it'll be five to 10 forward leads as far as you can until your back wants to round. And then five to 10, Nice little circles, again, only make them as big as you can handle. So don't try to make huge circles and then all the lines go out the window and then the hip isn't really moving because you're taking it all in your back, for example. But that's what I would start with. 
with sciatica. There are other things we can do, but initially that might be all you need just to actually get the hip moving properly because once your range of movement improves, generally your pain goes away. So you need to find whatever range of movement you don't have that you should have and then you need to get it. So I hope this helps.